Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fly Twice, I'm Joshua, and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff review of the Homeworks by Slacken & Co. Sunday Morning Cereal 18 ounce 4 wick candle, which you see I have burned here. So this is a post-burn review. Um, right off the jump, I will say, in some ways it feels silly to review this um, because it really is a novelty candle in my mind. Um, it's one of those candles that I don't think anyone has ever said, oh man, I really wish my home could smell like a box of cheap, fruity flavored artificial cereal versus I really would love a nice apple crumble or, you know, fresh baked bread or, you know, all the different fruits and all, all the things, the gramans, the conceptuals, whatever we, we love to sniff. Um, that's not to say I'm not hating on it at all. I mean, I, I purchased it and it wasn't just, you know, to, to get a review out there and get views by any means. It really is because I was intrigued and, and I find it interesting. But the same way that Bath & Body Works had like a bubblegum candle that I purchased, I never in years, even though it smelled authentically bubblegum, I never burned it because I was like, you know, I never really, I like the smell of it because I like the taste of it, but not something that I ever feel like I want to spread throughout my home, if that makes any sense. Like, it's not offensive, it's just not something that I crave as like, oh, I want to be a wash in bubblegum. And so it's kind of the same deal with this. So so I guess I'm kind of talking about the fragrance, you know, desirability, or, or what do I really want? Do I want that sort of scent? Um, end of day, probably not, but it's not bad and it's novelty, and novelty isn't a bad thing. Novelty is exactly you know what it can be. It can be fun, it can be nostalgic, it can be throwback, it can be a little bit silly, it can be a little bit sweet. That's kind of, you know, novelty candy, novelty toys. It's all just a little bit of whimsy and fun. And that's what this is. You know, it's not highbrow, it's not, you know, fancy blends. It is, you know, novelty, but it is, it's whimsical and it's fun. And I'm, you know, we all need more fun in our lives. So I'm, I'm here for it from that sense. Um, so what I'm going to do, going to talk a little bit about, first, like, I guess, the aesthetic and art direction of the, the candle. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about, as I love to do when I dig into my scents, the history of Fruit Loops, which I never thought I'd do a, you know, a video on the history of the scent of Fruit Loops. But there's some interesting stuff out there because, um, you know, I think everyone always wonders, oh, is it the same as, you know, Fruity Pebbles and Tricks and are they different flavors and what is the flavor and all that kind of thing. So I just did a little bit of research and, you know, a couple of, let's call it fun facts to share. Um, then I'll do my sort of in-depth sniff review and then, though I don't have a candle to compare to, I did actually purchase a box of Fruit Loops to do a comparison of those. And they're pretty, I mean, you know, I don't usually eat cereal much anymore. And if I do, it's not going to be like the fun kitty cereal, but it tastes like, tastes like, you know, a uh, a whimsical childhood cereal, which is exactly what they're going for this clearly with Sunday morning cereal. So the other thing that's interesting, I think other reviewers and uh, folks in, you know, fragrance and candle communities have called out, it's sort of an interesting trend um, in, you know, some of the, the, the big candle companies um, this season specifically, or the past couple of years, of launching novelty cereal candles. Um, you know, you had Kringle Candle Company, I guess this spring launched Marshmallow Morning, as well as Fruit and Flakes. Um, over the past couple of years, Bath & Body Works launched Rainbow Confetti, which though it had a bunch of different notes in it for their Pride collection, including like frosting, they did have like a fruity cereal note in there as well. Um, of course, Cereal Marshmallow Bar, which was more like kind of your Rice Krispie Marshmallows. Um, and then there's even, I, I, you know, vendor companies for years, the vendor wax companies that do sort of like kind of more the more mom and pop shop and um, of melts and tarts and things like that. Uh, they've had Fruit Loops dupes or Fruity Cereal dupes, as they often sometimes call them to avoid, you know, copyright issues um, for years. And it's kind of that limonene, straightforward lemon fruity scent, but it's a full on perfect dupe from the fragrance oil world um, of a Fruit Loops slash Fruity Pebbles slash Tricks uh, scent. Um, but that's just kind of funny. It's, it's like, I guess the marketing or the trends are just all there, or maybe the fragrance houses that kind of a lot of the brands purchase blends from, maybe figured it out and, and kind of <laughs> were selling it to the different companies. As we all know, all the, the you know, most of the kind of more mainstream fragrance brands do work with suppliers and, you know, they're not completely distilling these oils on their own, you know, at their homeworks or Bath and Body Works or Kringle factories. They're working with, you know, third party suppliers who likely work with many of the providers. All well and good makes sense. That's how, you know, that's how the industry works. Um, however, uh, so that's just, so that's just, I find kind of interesting that it's all 
coming together around the same time. So first I will say a little bit about the art direction. It's again, you want whimsical, you want fun. This is where Homeworks really excels and having this huge glass vessel, the 18 ouncer, makes this like the perfect canvas or palette for them to work from. And it is just, you know, it's Fruit Loops, really saturated, bright, in some milk up against, you know, the glass bowl, just sitting in the milk and that's all around there. Um, the, this this label that's new this season where it's kind of the white band that has the script font and just like the, the, the name in black and white works well. Sunday morning cereal. Uh, and then the wax really is, wicks are a little, one, one, one wick going a little wonky there, but it's still burned well. As you can see, I burned it twice for a couple hours each time. Got a good pool. Um, and it is just the slightest hue of pink, similar to the berry trifle, um, where it's really as if, you know, all those artificial colors were sitting in that milk and it colored your milk just a little bit pink <laughs> towards the end of the bowl, uh, which is, you know, that sweetest sip of milk if you're finishing it up at the end there, right? Um, this also, though, did remind me in, you know, form um, Momofuku Milk Bar, um, which was started in New York City, gosh, at this point, almost 15 years ago, probably. Um, and then went, you know, Milk Bar went very wide and you can, I mean, buy the cookies in Target now even. Christina Tosi founded Milk Bar and actually was Milk Bar at Momofuku, um, the, the fried chicken restaurant. That's where it started, kind of like in the back of, of their place uh, in the Lower East Side in Manhattan. Um, and one of the things that, that they started at Milk Bar was they had a soft serve ice cream that was just called like cereal milk ice cream. And it was, I believe, corn flakes. So not frosted flakes, but just corn flakes soaked in their custard cereal blend, um, strained out, and then they froze it and had soft serve. So it just had this like corny, slightly sweet cereal flavor to it. Um, a little bit more uh, conceptually high-end than just like cereal with your ice cream in the sense that it wasn't particularly sweet, but it had that flavor of like cereal milk, like leftover in the bowl. That's just what this kind of uh, imagery reminded me a bit of. However, get into this. The notes on this one are crushed cereal, wild cherry, ripe strawberry, and sweetened milk. Sweetened by that cereal. Um, and to tell you just a little bit of the history of Fruit Loops, because who knew? I didn't know this. It actually was created in the late 50s, early 60s, where uh, Kellogg's wanted to create a competitor to General Mills Cheerios. Here's here's the gossip. Here's the hot tea on, on you know, cereal in the 1950s and 60s when it was all becoming all the rage for the, you know, baby boomer kids. Um, and that is, so they, Kellogg's wanted to create like a Cheerios killer. Um, and so they launched it. Um, and as you can tell, when you look at them, it's actually a pretty similar blend where it's like corn flour and wheat flour and a little bit of oat flour, oat fiber. Um, and essentially kind of failed. They were, they were called like OKs and they were O's and K's, um, but they were not colored and I don't know what the flavor was. And so they, they, that failed in the fifties and they literally were like, well, we have this machinery, we have this formula, we got to do something with it. So they threw in fruit flavoring. First three colors were red, orange, and yellow. So supposedly your, you know, cherry, orange, and lemon. We'll get there in a minute. Toucan Sam was created through, I think, Hanna-Barbera in that style. And it became this huge hit. Um, didn't kill Cheerios, but its own thing. And we realized they are really just kind of like a bigger Cheerio, maybe a little bit more sugar on them and the fruity flavor. Uh, the, the flavor, um, people have done, you know, there's been articles and things written like, what is the flavor? Well, first of all, all the colors are the same. And same thing when you get into tricks and, you know, Fruity Pebbles. There's one flavor across, you know, agnostic of the colors. It's all going to be the same uh, flavor. Artificial, now they call it, it's naturally flavored, but it's not as if there's, that doesn't mean, oh, there's strawberry juice and there's cherry juice. It means that there are compounds that are derived from natural sources versus artificial sources. But it still means if it's naturally flavored and the flavor is strawberry, it doesn't mean strawberries were made to make that flavor. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google, you know, what is natural flavoring? And it's kind of fascinating because it's not a mark of quality like you would think it is. It's not a mark for or against quality. It's just not, you know, the the, the moniker natural is, that is a far derivative of what you think. Like, oh, they're using fresh strawberries to make my cereal. Not most of the time the case. Um, however, the flavors, you know, generally speaking, are considered like a cherry, lime, orange, um, though supposedly someone at Kellogg's claimed it's orange, lemon, cherry, raspberry, apple, blueberry, and lime. And it's a combination fruit, F-R-O-O-T, of all of those blended together into one thing, and that's what all the Fruit Loops are. We'll see. Homeworks for the purpose of the, the candle uh, is calling it cherry and strawberry primary scents. So let's sniff. Well, it is A for authenticity. It really smells, I mean, side by friggin' side. 
little difference. I mean, good for them. They now at the same time, it shouldn't really be that hard to, you know, if you're trying to capture some very complex baked good or a beautiful, you know, conceptual, um, you know, tropical blend of florals, that can be difficult to do in synthetic fragrances and wax. Um, when you're taking something that's basically, let's call it artificially flavored because it's still like a compounded natural flavoring that's in the Fruit Loops, it should be kind of easy actually to figure that out and put it into wax. And that is what they did. There's not a whole lot to say other than it smells like your Fruit Loops, Fruity Pebbles cereals. Now, what's interesting is it really does get, you have that sort of lemony edge. It, it's the, you also get the, where I think that is interesting is it's not just whatever that fruit blend is, let's call it the the cherry lemon orange primary notes I'm thinking, um, but you're getting really like that, the little crystals of, you know, the pop, <laughs> the powdered sugar glaze kind of thing that's on here, you get that in here too. You smell that sort of dryness, like you just open the box and it's a little bit sharp with the, 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 the bright lemony side of it. For me, it's like heavily to like the sparkling citrus is what you're gonna get. I don't know why I'm describing a box of Fruit Loops. You guys all know what it tastes like. You know what it smells like. Indulge me, I suppose. But you get that cherry lime orange flavor. I would say, I, I know that like, I think Josh uh, mentioned and, and maybe some others have as well on Instagram um, that she was getting like a strawberry in there. And I could, I could definitely see strawberry, like whether it's strawberry or cherry, it's not hardcore, clearly directly one of those, which is the, you know, in essence, what the fruit blend is. It's a, an amalgam of all of these, but certainly this does lean toward berry. And I think, what do they call out? Cherry and strawberry in here, um, which I think makes sense. They're not gonna lot, you know, list six, seven, eight cents uh, of fruits on here because you're not gonna individually pick them out because it is that cool, that it full on blend it, to get the Fruit Loops traditional. Uh, style. Because let's be honest, if you put orange, lemons, cherries, raspberries, apples, blueberries, limes in a bowl, you're not going to say, oh my gosh, this smells like Fruit Loops. Yeah, it's going to smell like real fruit, which Fruit Loops doesn't, which is fine. The candle, end of day, point being, smells like the, the cereal. It is sweet. You've got the dryness of the cereal. It's authentic in that it is not just a fruit candle, it is a cereal candle very much. Uh, heavy on that sort of limonene kind of lemon side, powdery, sugary, and a bit of that Milkiness. Now, I don't get a ton of milkiness when I'm, you know, sniffing compared to the two. I suppose there's a slight creaminess to this, but some of that is also honestly visual because it looks creamy with a pink wax. There's milk on here. A little of that might be power of suggestion of influence, but it, it is a little bit less intensely, you know, citrusy or whatever uh, from that into this. And I do think it is a little bit of that creaminess added to it, which is, which is welcome. It is nice as that bowl of cereal. So, not much to say other than A for authenticity. It seems to be sold out right now. I believe someone said it may be coming to QVC if not restocked on the homeworks.shop website. Honestly, I also appreciate, you know, I've been spending a lot of time smelling, you know, the, the laugh cozen and boy smells and trying to explore all these other areas. In addition to, you know, of course, tons of homework. I appreciate that they kind of are willing to play um, and get a little whimsical and have something that is a novelty and blend because you wouldn't really call it a fruity. You wouldn't really call it a bakery or gourmand, almost like a confectionery but it's just a novelty. It's fun. Uh, it's fun, it's fruity, and it's breakfast Sunday morning cereal. Let me know what you think if you burned it or what you think of all the other cereal candles that are out there uh, right now because it's, it is interesting and some of them are probably more authentic than others, um, but would love to hear your thoughts as always. And until next time, take care.